Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and uh, thanks so much for joining me today. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, all those good things. Today I have a video for you that's going to be really controversial in lots of ways. Um, we're going to talk about Annex, A-N-A-C-S, and actually I'm going to show you some things that, um, first of all, I had a customer send a bunch of coins into Annex to get graded. Uh, some of them were just errors like this coin. But what we're going to do is we're going to review a bunch of coins and grading, and you guys tell me how Annex did. Alrighty, so this is what they call a lamination, not to be confused with lamentations, but uh, really a cool coin. War nickels are very well known for having lots of these problems. When they made this 35 to whatever, 35, 38% silver coin and alloyed it, they had lots of annealing problems, and so pieces of metal would just pull, pull off and peel off of the coins. So we're not going to worry too much about grading on these error pieces. I just wanted to show you these and talk about the time and place when it is, um, you know, pretty good value for getting um, getting coins graded by Annex. And oftentimes I have customers that will choose Annex for error coins. This is one of my favorite types of errors where the coin is simply split in half. I have had paired halves of these before. They're super awesome fun time and uh, really cool pieces. And uh, I'm, I kind of wish they would have popped up the back side of the front side on that one, but that's okay. A lot of nickel problems here. This is an off-center piece. You know, and they call it a misaligned obverse die because the reverse is actually pretty, pretty flat, pretty straight on. All right, we're going to get out of the errors and into the grading, and let's have fun with this, guys. You guys tell me how you'd grade a coin. And then we can look at the uh, particular coin here. This walk in the pretty half dollar. Once again, you know, my uh, client decided he wanted to use Annex for these coins because it was a lot cheaper to send them in. And he's not worried about them being, uh, you know, some type of long term investment. He just wanted them certified and he didn't want to spend the money. Um, he knew that the coins weren't high enough value, let's put it that way, to spend the money on NGC or PCGS. I believe what he did was a show special of like $12 a coin and then you drop them off at one show and pick them up at another show. So this coin is AU55. Um, my grade by the way in this coin would have been AU58. So uh, pretty conservative grade overall on that piece. Next up we've got a 1942 Walk in Liberty half dollar. You know, Walk in Liberty half dollars in uncirculated grades are oftentimes $30 to $75 for kind of average common date coins. AU coins will be $20 to $30 range, generally speaking. So it's actually a fun series for those of you who are new to coins and coin collecting. You can actually buy really cool looking coins for not a ton of money. And here we go with another really nice looking walker. Lots of little spots and stuff on the coin. But, uh, you know, from the camera lens especially, it looks like this is actually a full lustrous coin. But they called it an AU58. I will say it's got just a touch of rub on the, on the top part here. I mean, just a touch. That's a nice, that's a nice looking coin. And we've got one more um, error here. This is a double clipped curve. You got the clip, you got the clip here and a clip here. Here, clip there, clip everywhere, clip, clip. Yeah, that's a neat little coin there. You know, and you can understand, you get a coin like that certified with air on it because you wouldn't want to accidentally spend it. <laughs> you know, the coin is pretty pretty cool, but it's easy to, easy to miss. All right, 1938, Denver Mint, Mercury Dime. Similar, a lot of those mid-century modern coins, your Mercury Dimes, your... Um, Standing Liberty uh, quarters, your Walking Liberty half dollars, your um, Buffalo nickels, a lot of those coins, it's just not the type of thing that uh, you usually want to spend a lot of time and money in getting certified. So this coin has, I think, a nice full split band. That center band in there is really attractive. And overall, a very full, full lustrous coin. They called it a 65 full split band. 
And so this is the part that I think it's frustrating for people who really enjoy, uh, who really like Annex, is you'll look at coins and see how they get graded, and you'll say, well, these are graded exactly right on, or you know, really well, or whatever the term is. Why don't other people like it? Well, let me just say this. The only sports I follow is college women's basketball, specifically my University of Arizona Wildcats, and I can love that all day long and tell you how great the product is. You can come and watch it and even enjoy it. And you still may really never go to another game. It's, it's, there's like a similar thing going on here. I can look at Annex graded coins and say, yes, that's accurately graded. It's a beautiful coin. And also, you know, we're just not, people just aren't buying them. Why not? I, I can't tell you exactly why not. You know why? Why do certain why why are the why are the Kardashians famous? Right? There's like a whole list of things that go on in the world where you don't understand fully why some things really catch on and other things don't. Um, I I will reiterate here that um, I've had dozens and dozens of collectors tell me that they hate Annex's label, not the holder necessarily, but the label itself. Like I actually like the fact that you can see from the top. I like the fact that I can look into a box like this and see what's going on. I think that's that's a that's pretty cool. But um, the number one thing on Annex is uh, frequently asked pages that we're not changing our label. I mean, it's just we're not changing our holder, and so they get the question all the time. And I don't know that that would really solve their problem. This 1960 dime proof 67 deep cam. That's a neat coin. I mean. You know, um, I'll get back onto Annex and why they're popular or not popular after I talk about this coin. And, you know, the other thing that uh, someone could do is if you find certain coins that grade really high, like this coin, and the value's there, then you can try to cross it over if you'd prefer to. If at some point in time down the road the collector says, you know what, I think I want to go ahead and send that in to uh, get certified uh, in a PCGS holder because I'm doing a registry set. That brings me back a little bit to the comments and the conversation about Annex in general, which is, um, you know, if you, you know, is Annex not popular because they don't have a registry set? I don't think that's it. I just think that it's hard to make waves in a marketplace that's very heavily dominated by a couple of other companies already. Here's your Philippines 20 centavo. MS63, this coin to me is extremely conservatively graded. I mean, this coin, um, I would have called a much higher grade than just a 63. Maybe they're discounting it for the model toning or that spot. You know, you can, you know, the heavy spot on the left. I mean, you can make arguments that the spots like that should really affect grade quite a bit. It's a whole other conversation about toning, but I think that coin is very much so very conservatively graded. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, what I like to explain to people is I don't control the markets and neither do you. But in a way, you do. In other words, if everyone who watches this all of a sudden said, I'm going to start buying Annex coins, and you go to shows and you say, do you have any Annex coins? And you start buying them up. That'll, that actually affects the market, but it takes everybody to do that, right? So here's a 1921S. Better date. Uh, really nice full rim on this coin. Uh, Walking Liberty Half Dollars, actually, you can have a partial rim and still get to a good plus. So when you have a full rim, you're probably over good, better than good, very good. VG8, nice grade, like the coin. And I can't single-handedly change the marketplace, and neither can you, but collectively we could if you wanted to, you know, if everyone agreed to it. <laughs> we we can do we can do our own Reddit coin mob, like we're all gonna buy nothing but annex coins. Uh, but, but truthfully, if you look through these, some of you may change your mind about Annex. And what I mean by that is you might not start collecting Annex, but you may start looking at their coins. In other words, if some of you have been on the fence, hopefully one of the things that this video will show you is that you can look for nice coins in Annex holders. If you want to put them in another holder later, you could. There's a value proposition there. But, you know, this coin at AU58, you know, to me is really perfectly graded. You can, you can see just a little bit of breaks in the luster on this coin throughout and it's just barely there but it's just a beautiful coin nice AU58 but um, 
I, I will say that I have I uh, I do look at annex coins when I'm at shows, and depending on the coin, you know, I might go a little bit one way or the other. This coin's really cool because also you can tell it's just slightly circulated. You know, what I'm seeing here on this coin is that you have, you know, breaks in the luster across the uh, surface. Love that. Some of my favorite toning. Once we get into that bright, bright cobalt blue, you, you know, you can't, you can have color, but yeah, I like bright. You want it to shine at different angles and be bright. Shine like a diamond. And so on this coin, here's another AU58. You know, just the type of thing that my collector, you know, can tuck away and just kind of enjoy for, for, for a long time for himself. Here's another one. Same thing, this 38 nickel. We talked about how hard it is to spend the money on these and get them in a holder and make it worth your while if you have the coins raw. But uh, really attractive coin overall. And on coins, this is another time when people get coins certified by Annex when there's not a big spread in value on coins. MS65, um, oh, FS515 OMMM5, oh boy. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. All right, let me get my 20 power and glance at this, but I don't know the variety, so I'm not going to... I don't, I don't have my books out because I didn't expect that. I'm just going to look at the date really quick and see if we can see anything happening there. Oftentimes on these guys, you'll see something on the date. But especially on 38Ds, you'll see it on the mint mark. And it looks like there's something poking out of that mint mark there, but... You know... I don't know all of the. I don't have. I don't have all the 38D varieties memorized. That'd be like memorizing all of the 19, uh, 1878 half dollars. Uh, uh, pardon me, 1878 Morgan dollar varieties. Here is an 1895. We've got a nice Indian scent here. This is perhaps the first coin because I already saw the label when I picked it up. Perhaps the first coin that I think was possibly overgraded at AU55. Nice looking coin, lots of detail. I'd want to see a little bit more luster, but even then, you know, I, I still think it's an AU, I just would call it like an AU50. I just, there's no luster left on the coin, so I would have probably called it something a little bit different. Oh yeah, also, so you get a lot of these like large cents, half cents, things like that. You know, lots of coins that are in that anywhere from like you know, twenty to fifty dollar range. And it would be nice if people would just collect these because you know, what a cool looking coin! This half cent from eighteen thirty four. There's a nice coin that. You know, you can tell me what you'd grade it. You know, th these coins are harder on uh, your half cents. Have not a ton of fine detail work to them. There's a lot of bigger, heavier lines. And especially once you get into lower grades, it all melds together. So they call this a VG10. You know, I think I'd, I'd, I'd buy that as a VG all day long. Nice looking coin. All right. Here's another one, nice large scent. What's your grade on this guy, guys? Look, nice looking piece. Um, large sense, you know, I was talking about a lack of luster on that Indian scent. Large sense, hard to find with luster. Like, they didn't always come with luster to start with. Uh, it sounds silly to say, but it was it's different. It was a different type of luster on these guys. So it'll be a lot more subdued, like you'd see on a coin that almost has like a proof finish sometimes. They oftentimes won't have that same cartwheel. Now, you, you find them with cartwheels, don't get me wrong. But I mean, on a coin that has, especially if a coin that has a little bit of wear, You'll, 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 they'll be lackluster. I mean, there will be just a lack of luster. AU53, repunch date on this guy. Um, neat, neat coin. Once again, nothing to complain about on those guys. Oh, interesting. Stone Mountain. He sent in the Stone Mountain. Another coin that has, 
you know, most of its luster there, but you can see it breaks up in the fields a little bit and over the eagle. Nice looking piece here. We got an AU58. You know, and that's another one that maybe I would have called a 55 or something like that. It had a little bit more wear to it. Pilgrim, the Pilgrim is, uh, I don't want to say over, overrated or underrated necessarily, but I think for design, it has one of my favorite reverses. <laughs> for coins with boats, it's in the top, right? It's in my top 10. Top 10 U.S. commands with, with boats on them. You guys can start counting how many have boats. So anyway, this coin uh, actually is fully lustrous. And, you know, it does have a lot of that little like spotting or something. Looks like it was in an album too long. And, you know, it's the type of coin that I would have been tempted to maybe try to remove the spot safely with like some acetone, see if that would work. MS62. Still wouldn't complain about the grade on that one. It is not, I think, an attractive coin. Ah, this is a 20 cent piece, low grade. Just a nice evenly worn coin. This is, you know, I did a video about the coins, you know, that dreams are made of. But really, I mean, how handsome is this coin? Just a nice evenly worn 20 cent piece from the 1870s. My goodness, what the country was going through back then. You know, you had uh, just all kinds of expansion, but also um, you know, the economics were wild. You had people, you had something called a green back party which were mostly made up of farmers that wanted fiat currency and you had bankers that mostly wanted gold backed currency. I know it's a, it's a complete 180 from today's mentality. Wild bits, wild bits of history. Good six. Nice. I like that coin. That's a, that's a neat coin. Also, you know, once again, I think the grade, the grade fits. Here's a fun coin. I, I enjoy the MacArthur's. I really do. There's a whole lot of cool crossover to the Philippines coins, especially since a bunch were actually made by the U.S. These coins actually struck at San Francisco. Super light detail coin. Super high luster coin. And um, when are they going to get a Kansas City mint? I'm just curious. All right. 1947S, Philippines MS66. Now, this is the type of coin that I like the coin, but also... This is a coin that would trade pretty differently at a price point based on an NGC, or PCGS, or Annex holder. And once again, that's not anyone's fault. That's just, you know, the marketplace. So um, that's the type of coin that maybe, maybe if it's your coin and you have it in an Annex holder or you get it at a discount, you go ahead and get it uh, crossed over. Uh, oh, cool. Look at this, Look at this uh, nice off-center off -center piece. Beautiful. Um, also, you know, my, my client, he didn't, he didn't care that the coins were dirty, you know, no conservation on these guys. This one's pretty interesting. They called this coin an MS 60 and overall just a neat looking piece. MS 60 Brown. Let me get it straight. Oh, good. We got a couple more type coins, or at least one more type coin here for you to look at. And then just a couple more and we'll wrap it up. This 1833, little 10 cent piece. Once again, talk about putting together a nice little typeset. Well-worn coin, most of the details, or the, uh, most of the outline of the, of the uh, main devices are all there, but the detail is mostly gone. Fine 15, good looking piece. Last couple coins here. Um, I'm not familiar with this. I'm going to have to look closer at this guy here. So this one actually is listed as a double die verse on um, this Philippines pieces. And I will have to do some research because I was not aware of this DDO. And it's interesting because this is a coin that comes so lightly struck detail-wise. I'm just curious as to see where I could actually see any doubling when there is uh, such a flat finish to it. Once again, we'll have to research that guy. I'm hoping to be able to catch something here like on the General Mac. 
Jen Mack, Douglas Arthur. Look at that. They didn't put the MacArthur together, by the way. I find that to be kind of funny. Just a little design. Just a little design commentary here. Completely unwanted. All right. And last but not last but not least, I got one more after this. This 1940 half dollar. This guy here, I'm going to have to look. Sometimes I can see things a little better not on my camera. Like this one, you know, I was talking about there's a couple that I thought were overgraded. Just a couple. Even then they were pretty close. The price wouldn't have mattered. This coin they call a 58. But I think this coin is new. I think I would have called it new. Well, I got to get it just at the right angle to see just a little bit of some same thing on there. Just maybe a touch of break. But you can see how 58s aren't all created equal. I mean, some of them are like 59 and a halves, like that, that coin there is probably 59 and a half. Last coin, once again, looking at the difference between 58s and 60s. Um, on, on this coin, like the other coins, it's such a common coin, the 1913 Type 1, that there's not a big spread between a 58 and like a 63 or something like that. It wouldn't be worth trying to cherry pick is what I'm getting at. But I'll tell you what, if you had a rare date that you found in a 58 holder that you could get up into a higher grade, that would well be worth it. I mean, this coin here, they called a 58. So overall, um, you know, tell me what you think about Annex and their grading. And we can talk sometime about the marketplace ideas, but uh, I, I would hope that you understand that grade-wise, Annex is, in my opinion, as consistent and, and uh, standardized as anyone else which is part of the frustration for all my friends who really like Annex because, you know what, it's just um, I can't make them more popular any more than I can make women's college basketball more popular. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I've been the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.